Oh yeah, we're live and it's Wednesday's Real Talk on Real Estate. And today we're going to teach you guys how to prevent paying income taxes, just like Donald Trump, all the other developers in the world, and everybody who takes advantage of this one thing through the means of real estate. And ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest attributes to developing real estate, buying investment real estate, and holding investment real estate is the fact that you can do this. Because the federal government has tried to build housing for individuals and have proven to suck at it, it gives you and I, investors and developers, an opportunity to take advantage of what is called cost segregation. It's the depreciation of real property. Now, let me explain to you what that means in layman terms. What that means is you can go to work every single day. You can either work a job or you could be an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter. You just go to work and you generate income. When you generate income, what happens to the vast majority of the United States? In fact, it happens to over 85% of U.S. Americans is they work, they work, they work. Then they pay taxes and whatever's left after they pay taxes, they get paid in the form of a paycheck. Okay. Now, what happens with entrepreneurs is they earn, they earn, they earn, they spend, they spend, they spend. And then after they spend whatever's left, they pay taxes on. And the contrary to people that work jobs, they can't spend until after they get their paycheck. But before they get their paycheck, they get taxed. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that is the one attribute that is unbelievably undeniable between the self-employed and the working class professional that's working a job. And one of the things that I love most about real estate is that both of those people pay income taxes. But here's the difference, ladies and gentlemen, here's the difference. OK, so when you go out as an entrepreneur and you generate capital and revenue, one of the big things is you go out, let's say that you make a million dollars a year or, or let's say you just started a business. And what I find interesting that self-employed people do, and this happens all the time because of, because we're in construction, the vast majority of subcontractors hate paying taxes, just like everybody else, and they want cash. And the less sophisticated contractors are always begging for cash. And they're a real pain in the ass because in this day and age where electronic currencies are becoming more popular and uh, more uh, socially acceptable, and it's going to become one of our main mean, one of our main uh sources of income outside of gold and silver and precious commodities and precious steels is that crypto and electric, electric currencies are going to be the wave of the future now. Okay. Now let's take a look at this real quick, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's go back and let's, let's talk about these folks that want not to pay taxes. What I tell people that are out there working and they don't want to pay taxes is invest the money into real property, into real estate. Either develop it ground up or buy it pre-existing. So this holds true for anybody that's investing in single family rental homes. Okay. So you single family rental home investors, those of you guys exercising the burst strategy, those of you guys who are doing short-term rentals and exercising um, like Airbnb and short-term rental rental arbitrage models don't, don't qualify because an arbitrage model, you're renting somebody else's real property. So the benefit for you not doing an arbitrage model and actually coming in and buying the real estate is that you actually get to own real property and then you get to depreciate it. Okay. Now there's a means to this. And so I always tell people invest in real property because it is the best tax shelter that you can have. Now, as you scale up, obviously the tax breaks get bigger. And as the revenue grows on any asset and the net operating income, the income that the property produces after, after you pay all expenses, gives the property a higher valuation. And the higher the valuation, the more money there is to write off. So one of the big things that I always tell people is I say, look, guys, we, we go in, execute at the mo execute your value at the lowest at the lowest and most compressed cap value as humanly possible because the lower the cap rate, the higher the value of the asset. Now, 
when you're going in and you're buying, you want to do the contrary. You want a higher cap rate. And then that way you could come in and ride the upside and teeter totter the property. Okay. Now, when you do that, you get the highest maximized value out of that asset as humanly possible. So then when you go in and you hire a cost segregation professional for a few thousand dollars, they go in and do a market study based on the and value your property. They're like an appraiser. And so but what they do is the way cost segregation works is you cannot depreciate the land itself. So they take a land value. And traditionally, they take a land value based on the um, assessed value of the land, typically like the tax tax assessment value of that land. And so let's say, for example, you have an asset that's worth $750,000. And let's say that the land value on that is $120,000. That leaves you with $625,000 of whatever it costs to pour the foundation, the piping in the ground, the wallpaper, the uh, paint, the roofing shingles, the, the lumber itself, the refrigerator, the flooring, the tile, the carpet, everything that's in that property, everything, the cabinets, everything in that property, it starts to diminish with age, does it not? So the way that the federal government looks at it is in due time, that asset is depreciating. It is starting to fall apart and it's going to need to be renovated. And so every single year, that asset becomes less valuable, less valuable in the worth less, worth less in the eyes of diminishing return. Right now, obviously, there's real appreciation of assets. OK, but when you're looking at depreciation, you're depreciating the asset based on its use and wear and tear. And so you go in and you hire a cost segregation professional and there's what's called bonus taxes right now. Uh, there's there's accelerated depreciation. It's it's it's, it's cost segregation taken with tax bonuses so that you can depreciate the asset quicker. OK, now, typically you can depreciate the asset over the course of five years. Now, what you get to do with bonus depreciation is you could take that depreciation accelerated and you could take up to 80 percent of that depreciated value. Now, right now, the the legislators are trying to propose that we can do a 100 percent cost seg in one year. So you could take 100 percent cost segregation in the very first year you own that asset. And we had that um, just a few years ago and then it went to 80 percent, then 60 percent. And now it's back up to 80 percent. They're trying to get it to 100 percent because you could go in and you could take that depreciated value on that asset and you can take that over the course of whatever the uh, it whatever length of time you own that asset or whatever the length of time it is it ta- that it takes you to generate that amount of revenue in taxable income and depreciate that down to zero. So if you have an apartment complex and because most of the people that are watching our content are real estate investors to, um, investing in multifamily real estate. So one of the big things that I love most about buying multifamily real estate is that I can take it and I can build it out and I can cost segregate it. And when I cost segregate it, one of the big things that we can do is go in and depreciate that asset down to zero. Now, what the great thing about post COVID is that values went through the roof. And when, when, and when post COVID hit and values went through the roof, everybody who did cost segregation at that point in time have these large tax breaks. And the only way that you're going to have to pay that back is if you sell the asset. Now, if you're building and holding and keeping these assets long term and they're cash producing, don't sell the assets. One of the biggest things that you want to do is you want to go in and hold these assets because they're cash producing. They cash flow and it's called passive income. It's residual income. And so one of the things that the wealthy do is they go in and they invest in larger assets. So our students, when they come in, they start working with us. Let's say they're buying land and building houses. And let's say that their first year, they go out and make $150,000 building a house. And the second year, they go out and maybe build two of them and make $300,000. In their second year, they sit back and go, damn, how do I keep this money without paying it in taxes? Because what sucks about making $300,000 is that $125,000 of that has to go to federal income taxes. That sucks. No one wants to pay that. Okay. The thing that sucks about going out and working uh, to be a doctor is that physicians on average make $215,000 a year nationwide. And so if you, if you make $215,000 being a doctor, you're going to have to pay someplace in the neighborhood about 90 to $95,000 of that in federal income taxes. And so that sucks too. So you don't want to have to pay that. And everybody cringes, just like the subcontractors that come to our office trying to get us to pay them cash because they don't want to pay taxes either. Well, now you could go in, 
have everything written in a check. You depreciate your car. You depreciate all of your expenses. You take off. You take the write off on all your expenses, the travel, your kids, um, them going to private school, whatever it is. And then you take all those write offs. Whatever's left is what your taxable income is. Unless you go in and you cost segregate a real property commercial or residential, and you hold it, and then you depreciate it down, and then you take the entire tax write-off. Now, I remember back uh, when, uh, I remember seven years ago when Donald Trump was running for office, and guys, it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, Republican, Democrat, the reality of the way the U.S. is supposed to run is that there's some, it's supposed to keep an equal balance. The reason there's Democrats and Republicans is because there's supposed to be differences of interest between both parties, it's not supposed to create conflict between it. Now, all of a sudden, there's all this conflict between Republicans and Democrats. Who cares? Vote for who benefits you the most. And I always go for who benefits, one, my ethic beliefs and my financial beliefs most. Um, that's why a lot of people that are Democrat go Republican because they go in and they vote for the president that doesn't allow um, abortion, right? That's their big thing. Just like us that are in real estate, I go Republican because it benefits me financially because of these type of tax laws. Now, Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter. Everybody that has money invests in real estate. The one thing that all entrepreneurs have in common, the ultra wealthy all have in common, is that they, own own real, they all own real estate. And the reason they all own real estate is because it's the number one tax break that we have as U.S. Americans. You could go in, live in a single family home, and if it's your primary residence, you can get up to $250,000 per spouse if you're married. So half, half a million dollars after two years of living in that home, which is incredible. But now let's say you go out and buy investment property, and most people are sitting back and they want to uh, do a 1099 exchange. I tell them you could do a 1099 exchange, a 1099, I mean, not a 1099, um, a 1031 exchange, a 1099. We've been, we've been doing W2s and 1099s for the last two months. My brain is thinking 1099s because of all the, um, all of the uh, 1099s we've been sending out to independent contractors. Um, so 1031 exchange, you can go do a 1031 exchange. And if you do a 1031 exchange, you have a compressed amount of time to go out, find a piece of real estate of equal or larger value to offset the capital gains taxes. Or you can go out and it doesn't even matter about capital gains taxes. You can offset your federal income taxes or your capital gains taxes by going out and investing in commercial real estate or residential real estate. And yes, you can sell it. And as long as you purchase something before the end of the calendar year, if you're running on on calendar years, um, you can go out and you can cost segregate, do a cost segregation study if you buy the asset before the end of the year. And then you can do accelerated depreciation and you can write that asset down. And so the benefit to you for you to scale up without having the tax liability and still being able to protect yourself and not having to be in a race, in a sprint to go out and do a 1031 exchange. So I love cost segregation for that purpose. Now, it's the federal government's way of rewarding those of us that are developing real estate and those of us that are investing in real estate, those of us that are creating homes and housing for the, the rest of the U.S. population, whether it's single family homes or it's multifamily homes. It's a great way to do it. Now, I always talk about in relation to single family and multifamily because those are our two biggest buckets. But ladies and gentlemen, it also works with commercial retail, commercial office, and it also works with, with self-storage and it works with industrial warehouse. It works with any type of real property. The only thing that you can't appreciate is the land itself. OK, so if you go out, you buy land, you can't appreciate the land because the way the federal government looks at it is that there's a certain amount of land on this earth and God's not making any more of it. It's not depreciating. It's only becoming more valuable. And so you can't appreciate land. So you take fair market value for the land. You cost segregate the asset and real property up above the land. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all tax deductible through the means of depreciation and cost segregation. Ladies and gentlemen. This is the number one most protected tax loopholes that you can take advantage of. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a CPA, nor am I an accountant. I don't have, I don't pack, uh, practice tax law. All I do is I'm bringing you this to your attention as a real estate professional, educating you on what I do and what I hire my CPAs to help me with. And I encourage you guys to consult with your CPAs and I encourage you guys to Consult with your real estate professionals to help you do the cost segregation studies. Bro, you're going to go to prison. No, I'm not. You're going to go to prison. You're going to pay taxes. I do it all the time. We get audited. 
You don't go to prison. This is 100% legal, guys. You don't go to prison for cost segregating real estate. It's a reward that the federal government gives to those people that are creating housing. So, you know, all that shows is your lack of sophistication in real estate, bro. You need to come in and work with us. You're not allowed to avoid income taxes. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'll call you bullshit right now all day long. You don't have to pay income taxes when you do a cost segregation study. I have full cost segregation studies, guys. When I go out and I do buy real property, like I just finished my Youngtown project. We just stabilized that. We just had that thing appraised at $31 million. We take the, the land value. We paid one. The land value is $1.8 million. We still have over $29 million in tax savings. We won't sell it. I'll keep that asset forever. That asset will go on to my children. And when we, if we want to go out and the value of that asset goes up, here's what's cool about it. Like one day that asset will be worth $50 million. It might not be for another 10, 15 years, but in 10, 15 years, when that same asset that I've already depreciated is worth more money, I go in, I get a new appraisal. I go in, I get a new cost segregation study. I've already taken X amount of depreciation, which is that $29 million. And then I take the land value out of that. And then whatever's left between the separation, I have my cost segregation professional who is usually a CPA, give me the valuation dip variance. And now I can take that tax deduction later as well. And so ladies and gentlemen, it is part, just Google cost segregation in real estate. Okay. So if you go in, ladies and gentlemen, you can go in and say, you go, check this out. What is cost segregation in real estate? Segregation is a tax planning tool that gives real estate investors the chance to accelerate the depreciation of their investment properties. By doing this, they reduce their annual federal and state income tax payments, potentially freeing up their money for other investments or purchases. Oh my God, I love you. Oh my gosh, I love cost segregation. Bam, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Cost segregation right there from Google, you heard it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the number one most protected tax loopholes that is 100% legitimacy and legal. You just have to get your CPA and your, or your tax professionals to do a cost segregation study for you, and you depreciate your asset. Same way you depreciate cars, guys. Like if you go out and you buy a vehicle for your business and you're using it for your business, like our work trucks, for example, we go in, we buy work trucks, we use them for work. We depreciate those work trucks every single year because they're falling apart. And so every single year, all we're doing is we're, we're taking the depreciation of those vehicles. We do the exact same thing with real estate. We buy a massive building. And so like our, like we're doing right now, um, our West Camelback project, when that asset's done, it should appraise for between 65 and $70 million. Now, the asset will cost us about $50 million to build. Most of that will be bank money. And then we'll go in. We'll do a stabilized loan on the asset. We'll do a cost segregation study on this. The land will be worth someplace between four and five, I mean, between four and six million dollars. Let's call it six million dollars. Let's say that the uh, the property is worth someplace in the neighborhood of $65 million or $60 million. Now, we take the $6 million land value, subtract that from that. And ladies and gentlemen, the variance is still $54 million and we have a $54 million tax write-off and we can, and it never expires. That's what's beautiful about cost segregation. It never, ever expires. So until we have taxable income of $54 million, we pay zero federal income taxes and it's legal. And they don't teach this in school. You know why? Because the Rockefellers, went out and created our U.S. education system to teach you guys how to be great employees. They didn't teach you all of this cool stuff that the wealthy do. So people get mad and go, oh, I hate Trump because he doesn't pay taxes. It's so illegal. Just like just like these people that are in here. Udehef, or however you pronounce your name, bro, you need to educate yourself. It's ignorance. You, There's no room for enlightenment in the mind of ignorance. And you have to enlighten your mind to be able to understand what's available and at your fingertips, that's 100% legitimate and what wealthy people utilize. Why would you go out? Did you guys know that in 19, before 1912, there was no federal income taxes? Zero. There was none. In, 19, or in 1913 is when federal income taxes started getting implemented. Let me explain this to you guys. 
1912, hopefully the, uh, YouTube doesn't take this off because this is legitimately how the Federal Reserve was started. The Federal Reserve started in 1912. Google it. Our, our Constitution says that nobody but the federal government themselves can print money. But a non-governmental agency, yes, the Federal Reserve is a non-governmental agency. It is ran and delegated by our central banks. J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch, all of the big guys, ladies and gentlemen, run our central banking system. And in 1912, they started printing money. Our federal government gave that constitutional right away to the Federal Reserve. And now, in 1913, because the Federal Reserve started lending the money they were printing to the, our federal government at a marginal rate, 1%, 2%. And then the following year, in 1913, they said, okay, how do we pay this, this amount back to the Federal Reserve? And we say, hey, ding, 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 ding. I have a great idea. Let's take the U.S. population and let's start implementing what's called income taxes. Before 1913, guys, they didn't exist. These just started existing over the last 110 years. And so in 1913, they started implementing income taxes. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Now, everybody thinks that, uh, that uh, JFK was assassinated because he was Catholic. That's bullshit. They were, he was assassinated because he was trying to dismantle the Federal Reserve. And because he was trying to dismantle the Federal Reserve, he got waxed. They, they killed him. Look it up. That's the real story. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you guys can continue paying federal income tax if you want, or you can learn how real estate really works. And you can real, really exercise the benefits of the attributes of going out and buying real estate and doing cost segregation to do accelerated depreciation and take full tax write-offs. FR1, just saying, both Trump and your favorite Democrat do the exact moves. Check the paperwork. 100 friggin' percent. You think that Biden is paying taxes on his real estate? Do you think that... Pelosi or Pelosi or whatever the hell her, her, her name is, is paying taxes on her $100 million um, net worth. No, guys, these guys are all buying real estate. Doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, these tax laws are set up. And that's why the law always exists because they function on the same tax laws that we do. And it's just a little loophole that the ultra wealthy take advantage of, but it's available to everybody. You don't have to be the ultra wealthy. Everybody can take advantage of them. Okay. Now let's see here. I don't have a favorite Democrat. Okay. How do I get um, help from your people, Jerome? I could really use someone to talk to. I have a lead on 24 units, USDA property. I am licensed realtor and the seller is really motivated. Cool. So you're trying to sell me real estate. I mean, 24 units, send over trailing 12s. Um, we're like a I'm like Lucky the Leprechaun, man. Um, why? I, I, I get more once-in-a-lifetime opportunities sent my way every single day. So what I tell people to get my attention is learn how to underwrite real estate. You show me some true underwriting, then, um, then I look at it. But because we get inundated with uh, deals just like this every friggin' day, um, we just don't have the bandwidth to underwrite all that stuff. Um, so I stay sticking. I stay in my in my lane, man. I just stay focused on my deals, on my large multifamily development deals. I just picked up a twenty a, a piece of land uh, that I, I'm overpaying for it. But man, I'm gonna build 29 units. I'll make three million dollars on the low end in just the next uh, 14 to 18 months on just this little 29 unit development. Now that one I will have to pay taxes on because I'm gonna sell it. But I'm going to cost seg you the cost segregation of another property to pay zero taxes on that three or four million dollars that I make. And I'll end up putting that money back into uh, to buy another big project is what I'll do. OK, state property cash flow is very limited. I think where the money will be made with is in the uh, tax benefits. OK, cool. Um, yeah, you just need to get a hold of my team and you need to learn how to underwrite it and just share, share the underwriting with us. And if you already know how to underwrite it, just uh, get it, get it over. LOL, dude is getting uh, triggered and off topic. <laughs> Not even close, man. That was all on topic, baby. That was all on topic. You always get, you always get, a, you always get a clown in, in every classroom. Just go to school. You'll figure that out real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, cost segregation. You guys really want to, to learn how to do the, the big, the, the, you guys want to learn how to play 
the big game in real estate and really take advantage of the attributes, invest in real estate, invest in long-term holdings, single family or multifamily or any type of commercial real estate. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the number one tax advantage that you have as a U.S. American. Invest and always go out. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, always compound your success. If you like this content, you want more content just like this, click and subscribe to our YouTube channel and pound that thumbs up button. Give us some love if you learned absolutely anything at all from the time we started to right now. And if you had, didn't get a chance to watch this from the beginning, then go back, rewatch, comment, pound, hashtag, repeat, watch it from start to finish and learn how to take depreciation of your assets through the means of cost segregation and invest in long-term holdings. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you guys. Good night and go out and compound your success.